mainly because he's been transforming himself away from being a comedian to becoming a political agitator. Don't get me wrong, he's still funny, but angry funny, as opposed to lewd funny. We'll speak to him in a minute, but one thing that is interesting about his year is that it kind of kicked off on this programme. Yeah, no, I don't vote. Well, how do you have any authority to talk about politics, then? Well, I don't uh, get my authority from this pre-existing paradigm, which is quite narrow and only serves a few people. I look elsewhere for alternatives that might be of service to humanity. As Newsnight interviews go, it was certainly unusual. You are a very trivial man. <laughs> what do you think but it spawned a new political movement. There's going to be a revolution. It's totally going to happen. I said, not, not only I, I ain't got a flicker of doubt, this is the end. The revolution will not be televised. Russell Brand is an unlikely revolutionary. I've smuggled a bunch of bananas into this country. <laughs> but he has his own news channel now to challenge the establishment view. It's called The Trues. True news. Dun, 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 dun. Here is some truth today. Here is some truth and them them truth today. The truth today. This is where I analyse the news. It has hundreds of thousands of YouTube subscribers, but Mr. Brand also has his critics. Tell me what you think about what Russell Brand said. It's the most idiotic thing I've ever heard. The likes of Russell Brand coming along and saying something so damn ignorant. It's absolutely spoon feeding it to him. There can be no doubt that Russell Brand has tapped into the current wave of discontent with traditional politics. Russell Brand is no UKIPper though. He's got his own manifesto. It's in his new book, Revolution. Let me know what you think of it, but do bear in mind when you're giving me my criticism, it's already like published, so I can't really do anything, so don't go, I don't like it, it's awful, because I'll just be hurt. You'll just be hurt in a person's feelings. What I'm basically asking for is some encouragement and reassurance. <laughs> Much of it is familiar fare for students of the Occupy movement. Economic redistribution, contempt for big corporations and materialism, dislike of power and elites. For him, including Fox News, where he was recently threatened with arrest. We'll run this building one day, then we'll, you know, we'll share it. So the real question is, is Russell Brand's new book more Groucho or Carl? Well, the book is not just an entertaining read. It has a lot to say, and at times you can think he's neither Groucho or Carl, but the new Jesus Christ. At other times, that he's simply a comedian who looks a bit like Jesus Christ. Whichever it is, he's with us here. Evening to you. Thanks it, for the introduction and the enjoyable film. It's a very, um, it is a very interesting book, actually. There's a lot in it, isn't there? We've got a lot to talk about. But interesting. I put a lot into it. I put my heart no, in it. It's very, it's very important to me, the book, Evan. And you read Thomas Piketty, or big chunks of Thomas Piketty, and I can tell you that a lot of people have bought that book and didn't... Uh... He don't make it easy, does he, Piketty? <laughs> he doesn't. What was funny was actually, out of that interview last year, where you said you didn't vote, you were accused, and are still being accused, of, by people, of turning young people off politics, not getting them engaged, and ironically... You've actually probably engaged more young people in thinking about these issues than any politician who votes, right? I mean, I, we get, I've had texts today from people Except who... Except, I don't see the irony in that, because my point was, uh, don't vote, become apathetic, do nothing. My point was, become engaged, become engaged in procedures that will have an impact, creative, direct action. So, uh, I was never... I think it's clear from the book, and clear for anyone who doesn't want to pursue the idea of a kind of nihilistic, apathetic argument deliberately to diffuse it, that what I'm saying is that people must become involved in their own political destiny. Now, look, let's, for people who haven't read the book and, or who haven't seen the previous interviews or haven't followed this, let's just go through some of the things, the enemies in the book. Let's just go through them. So who don't you like? What are the, what are the big enemies? You mean what do I think are yeah, the challenges in, in, in we the face? Book, who, no, yeah, who are the, th well, who are the objects in your... Uh, it's not objects, because I'm trying not to approach this in a negative way. I've just come from uh, Parliament Square, or Tarpaulin Square, as it's become known by the successful Occupy movement, who are currently there, who are dealing with the police politely and lovingly. And this is a, a new kind of political movement, and precisely the kind of political movement that we want to encourage, where people are disillusioned with traditional, conventional politics that doesn't represent us, the ordinary people, that might be fun for those of us 
journalists that work in media to chat about, or people with columns, or people with loads of money and big corporations. But for ordinary British people, they don't feel that they're being represented. No one wants the NHS dismantled. My mate Lee, who's a fireman in Greys, who's like the, the fire brigade union, can't get no coverage in the, in the media, who are facing terrible cuts, who can no longer do their jobs healthfully, safely and effectively, these are the kind of people mm. that we're addressing. And it needs to be through creative direct action because the apparatus for ordinary people to be engaged politically simply doesn't exist. And that's what came up in the last interview with your predecessor, Jeremy there, yeah. and, and which is more and more prevalent as, uh, as I've been going on, this journey of learning and education yeah. from the people that are Well, OK, look, so let's just give us a couple of things, obvious things that you would do about it. Well, firstly, what I would suggest is, like, I took great inspiration from the Focus E15 mums who were turfed out of their homes by a Newham council that were indifferent yeah. to their plight and, and organised themselves creatively and opposed that. And through that action, they won 40 council homes for homeless people in the borough through creative direct action. I would draw your attention to the New Era estate in Hoxton where like many Londoners and many people in our country they're frightening, they're facing terrifying situation around housing and again they're organising. But Russell, this is very very peaceful because you've got you've got much bigger view of how society should Absolutely change. Absolutely I book, do. The one little group but, doing something here. But Evan this is what people, you misunderstand. No, this is, this Evan is, what you misunderstand mate like what a lot of people in your line of work misunderstand is that we don't want pedagogic figures coming in and didactically shouting at us. We want to organise ourselves, as is happening on the New Era state. The, the time where people trust politicians, that's over. That's the, that era has passed. Yeah. Now, I'm not suggesting they, suge they start trusting me, an entertainer. I, I, I'm a comedian who looks like Jesus. That's a much closer, much closer description. But I can participate by amplifying what may seem like piecemeal causes to you. But let me tell you, to the people on the new no, era... No, let me finish, mate. Let me finish. To the people on the new era estate who are losing their homes, so the brother of the richest Tory MP in this country, Richard Bennion, Edward Bennion... Well, we don't know. He's not here to, to justify himself. Well, so thank let's... God, mate. Because otherwise I wouldn't be. Because let me tell you, they've got enough of a voice. The BBC gives enough of a voice, enough of a voice to conventional wisdom. I'm here to give a voice okay. to ordinary people like that. And their struggle, let me tell you, Evan, it don't seem piecemeal to them. Because they're being faced with losing right. their homes so men like Edward Bennion can make let, yet more well, profit. To them it's not piecemeal. That's how the BBC missed the mark. You don't know what ordinary people care well, about. People are losing their jobs, they're losing their services, they're losing their homes. And we're tired and there's no one to represent what? us, mate. There's no one to represent can us. We, That's can the kind can of thing I ask you a specific thing? Show. Can I? We well, we, we, we the truth to do that. We just we news. go through some news you can trust. Can we? Can we look, look at well, specifics? Because sometimes show, tell me what you want to know. I think sometimes you can you can you can make generalities, right? And they don't. They, 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 that you can get away with a lot. Well, that's, I think let's talk about... Like that in let's, itself was a no, generality. Let's, let's, let's look at this one. Or a in the book, you say here, you say in the book, let's kill General Motors, let's take it back from its shareholders, scribble out the name and the logo, and let's use its resources for something more valuable. Now, Evan, now, I hope you're not going to use I'm this opportunity you, for you, an Oxford-educated no. economist, to come no, no, on the TV and be rude to me... I'm not being rude. I want to an autodidact, a self-educated yeah, yeah, man, for simply trying to suggest that there might be an alternative to corporate hegemony. But there might this. be an alternative to, just to our this. governments bending over for the benefit of big corporations. I want Let to raise this That's because... That's what ordinary people care about, mate. It's because... affecting ordinary people's lives. I don't know if it's affecting no, 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 places no, no, you hang out and where you drink. Let me speak. Tell me what you need to know. Yeah. There may be... I mean, you're very good in this book, Thanks. And, and you're going to get a lot of praise for the way you I don't document. Want praise. No, I want change. You're going to get a I lot of praise. Change. Great. For identifying I want change. a lot that people don't like about society at the moment. Mm -hmm. It's very easy to spot things that are wrong with society at the sure. moment, right? Absolutely. Easy. We yes, have the bejeweled this. bus you talk about. 85 people yes, in the world inequality. who have as much as 55 people. What's your point, think? Evan? What's your My point, point is, Come on. You might, you sharpen propose, up your big shoes. You propose <laughs> another system. And it might be that your system is better, yes. or it might be that you haven't had the imagination to think about the problems that the other system has. So I'm trying to get into a detail here, which what, you, you want to I take. Imagination. That's no, your accusation. No, my, 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 What's the problem? With I my want imagination? to take an example of something you said. Take the example. Take, Let's take General example. Motors from its Absolutely. Do you know who owns it? The United Auto Workers Union owns a chunk of it. The Canadian government owns a chunk of it. You take it from them, and they're Evan, are you seriously telling me? 
that the corporate world, companies like Monsanto and Pfizer, are operating on behalf of us ordinary people? Is that your argument? Are you coming on Newsnight, a great British institution, to say that corporations like Vodafone, Amazon, sometimes Google, yes. who don't pay their taxes in this sometimes country, yes. who are aided sometimes and assisted no. by our government, while people fill the squares, arrested for possessing tarpaulin so they can peacefully protest. You want to say that corporates are getting a rough ride? I don't Evans, say they're getting a rough Evans, ride. Mate, look, I you've got a proper ask, job. But I want to ask you... Now, why don't you what answer you some propose, questions? I want to ask what you propose that people who own General Motors should do when you have mate, taken... I don't want to follow you down blind alleys about silly administrative okay. quibbles. Let me be absolutely okay, clear. Let's, let's I don't trust let's politicians. No one does. I don't trust the corporations in this country that you inadvertently work for every time you take this line with okay. me. Uh, what I'm saying is that people can run their own workplaces, people can run their own communities. The people of this country have been patronised enough, yeah, mate, no, no, let's not do it in this interview. You have yeah, another one. I'm not patronising anybody. Good. You say you, you want General Motors to stop making cars that break down in a few years. Mate, you carry, like, so look, they can sell all of them. Well, do you yeah. really believe that cars are made to break down? What, built-in obsolescence? Yes. Yeah, I believe okay. in built-in obsolescence, don't you? Well, you I, don't I, I tell you what, when we you were when I was a kid, when I was a kid, people make deliberately it's funny you say, when I was a kid, we went on holiday, and we could barely guarantee to get You're back again. You're much more tactile than cars, the Jeremy geezer. He cause, hated it when I touched his legs. Cause the, the cars, the cars were so unreliable, they'd become much more reliable. And I sort of think the companies that made obsolescent well, cars think, went out of business. You and think that, do you? Well, I, you I'm, honestly I'm, think I that? I posit that as at least a theory right, of look, capitalism. I don't, that look, might I don't wanna, I'm not going to sit here with you. I know you know that capitalism isn't working. I know I think you it's got know a lot of that a system that requires quantitative easing to hold it together, while energy companies are subsidised by our taxes, while renewable energies are ignored. I know you can't support that system, Evan. I know you're like, you're, you're it makes me feel like me, CEOs of big let business. Let me bring up the graph. I don't want to look at a graph, no, look, mate. I ain't got time for a bloody graph. Well, this is what I want to take this opportunity to talk to the people of this country no, 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 and tell them to get involved in creating corrective action. That's is, a lovely graph. It goes back well, to that, mate, This is the kind of stuff that people like you no, use no, not. to confuse people like us. Oh, I've got a graph, you. mate. I'm not trying to confuse you. You've not just come from the new era of state where Boris Johnson, who takes five times more meetings a year with bankers than he does ordinary people, we've got a graph. Off. Everything's tidy. Trying to just take you seriously, and I'm, I'm, I'm really, really. Okay, fine. well, tell me so what the graph you want to do with the graph. shows. It shows real wages and how people's wages have gone up over Evan, the last 150 years. Do you ever go and it's outside? Terrible. Just look at the right hand side. I'm on your side here. Look on oh. the right hand side. Look how far it goes down. Sure. Well below zero. That's the worst it's been for the last 150 years. Sure. Right? Go back over the previous bits, though. Don't talk to me like that, mate. Wa special. Wages have been going up all the time. Sure. Now, if I gave you a button here, you can push that button and get rid of that down bit at the very end. Everyone, I'm not But you get rid of a lot of the up bits. What, is, you your that what is your point? My point is that revolutions sometimes have good effects, but they also wipe out more than they intend. Thank you. Uh, you could have said that in five seconds without the daft graph. Well, I think the Here's graph is my point. Is really the systems together. we have at the moment aren't going to change within themselves because those systems are working for precisely the, the function they're intended to. They work for... They, they enhance the power and profits of elites. They support the rights of corporations. Yeah. At a time where the TTIP uh, agreement's being pushed through in Europe, I think we have to be more aware than ever of the disempowerment of ordinary British people. We have to support localised creating direct action movements. Are you going to overthrow John Lewis? What is, your, what is your question? Mate, I'm look, saying you're going to overthrow what, John Lewis. Look, let me tell you very clearly... Because it's easy to say I want to overthrow the banks, yeah, but are you right, going to overthrow John Lewis? That's I'll tell you what, I'll tell you, no, it's not a hard question, mate. It's not a hard question for me, sat in front of this lovely graphic that you've put together <laughs> there of Mir Che Guevara, a complex figure, okay, yeah. let, let's face it, a, a, a man who was occasionally brutal. Look, no, mate, what I'm suggesting is that I, as a comedian, as an entertainer, can use my voice to amplify people pursuing just causes. People like the, the Fire Brigade Union doing fantastic work. People like the, the ladies on the New Era estate. People like the Focus E15 months. If there's someone that has a campaign to overthrow John Lewis for some, re for some reason, which I believe that is to a degree collectivised and gives its workers representation the on the board, if someone wants that, just, then perhaps I'll support them. Just want to ask one other one, which I think busy. people will be surprised at. Sure. In the book you refer to the, the, the destruction of the Twin Towers in New York, 9-11, mm. as uh, what some people say looked like a controlled explosion. And, and one might read that as you giving some credence to conspiracy theories. You can read the book in whatever manner you would do like you to. Do you believe ever. that the, the Twin Towers were destroyed by 
forces of the American government or similar. I think it's interesting that at this time where we have so little trust in our political figures, where ordinary people have so little trust in their media, that, that we have to remain open-minded to any kind of possibility. I don't, I don't trust you. I don't that. know. I think you're correct. Do you trust the American government? Do you trust the British government? I mean, it's, like, not, it's not my views aren't really important at this point, but I, I think that well, most people regard it as ridiculous to suggest anything other than the Al-Qaeda destroyed those buildings. Well, what I do think is very interesting is the relationship that the Bush family have had for a long time with the Bin Laden family. What I do think is interesting is that the way that the, even the BBC reports events in Ottawa to subtly build an anti-Islamic narrative. I think that's very interesting. I think it's interesting the way these tragic events are used to enforce lots further of, controls on us. These, uh, there are lots of interesting things. Yeah. yeah, I think it's fascinating, mate, that what, the way that the media works in conjunction with big business and with the government to... We're ordinary people. But you're not like suggesting that the Bush family were involved in the destruction of 9/11. I don't want to talk about daft conspiracy theories here right, on Newsnight, mate. I'm, I'm, okay, I'm, I'm, I'm here. I'm here to talk very, very clearly about ordinary people creatively becoming Scotland, engaged with direct Scottish action. Scottish what did you think of that? Because that did seem to energise people. It certainly really did. I thought, I thought that would shows... Would you have voted in that referendum? Yeah, I would have voted yes, but I wouldn't have been surprised if things hadn't, hadn't significantly altered. I think that when democracy is appealing, when democracy appears to have an impact, then people are, yeah, you know, are willing to get engaged. And the Hong Kong protests, which of course are people trying to get a vote which you've been a little bit reluctant to, uh, to, 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 to encourage what people What I think's to interesting about uh, Hong Kong, mate, is that the protesters in Hong Kong are allowed sleeping bags under a communist Chinese government, and the protesters in Parliament Square right now can't have tarpaulin, can't have sleeping bags, where Boris Johnson, the mayor, and your mate, because I've seen your interview with you cozy and up to him, where he is putting private security firms in control of our police force, where protesters there aren't we've allowed to got, have We've only got half a minute left. Uh, I'm not going to ask whether you're going to vote next year, but I do want to ask you this. Tell me, why don't you stand next year? Well, because... Or are you still... I'm, are you thinking I'm very you happy to amplify the thousands, millions of people who are dissatisfied with the current regime, they're dissatisfied with media, you could stand. they're dissatisfied... If you could stand, they might, they might vote for you. Then you'd know that the people the you say moment, you're speaking I'm for, the people you say you're speaking for, well, actually I like... I think I've been very saying. clear that I have very little trust in this system, and I think my energies and efforts are best spent supporting people who are working very hard and doing great work in important issues like housing and having some control over their own work. Pe people on zero contract, uh, zero hour contract. Oh, what I want to do, mate, is support people who know what they're doing, I don't know provide you trust amplification. The you don't trust I trust people. Pe no, I trust because people. you say in the book about the Swiss, the Swiss voting the wrong way in a referendum, you say they've been Manipulated. I say that the media play a vital role in managing the outcome of referendums, as we saw in Scotland. How the BBC shamefully supported the no, no vote. How the BBC we've, shamefully we've given, fell we've given, with Cameron, <laughs> Clegg, we've given Miliband. So much air time to you. I'm very we, glad. We, 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 we Thank you. A lot What's of the truth? Ideas. True news. News you can trust. True that fact. Is all we have time for. We've Good got night. plenty of time. There's plenty of time. Good luck.